Captain Albatross here again with the Cypher Unlimited crew. We have our usual suspects of Spigs18 or Anthony. We have AD or Alpha Dean or just simply Dean. And uh, Dean, uh, why are we here today? Well, as everybody can see, it's a casual Wednesday, but it is the last, uh, or should I say the first Wednesday of a new month. And what we're going to do is just wrap up our new Game Master Month uh, overview. Um, and... This is our last article, and without further ado, we're going to get uh, Spigs over there to kick us off. It's knocking out the park, fellas. <laughs> yeah, first off, I want to say um, to everyone that followed these videos and, you know, actually took the plunge and became a GM for the first time, congratulations. Round of applause. So we record every Wednesday. So, you know, I know this article was written on um the 30th of january and today's the 5th of february but that's just the way things bounce so we're gonna go into um the last article written by charles ryan and it was game time you know it's basically everything that you do right before a game session and the uh, you know we'll basically go step by step with what's in the article and the first like section of the article talks about choosing characters. You guys have any advice about choosing characters, guys? I mean, the kind of characters you... They're not really up to you, honestly. I mean, unless you're making pre-gens for everyone. Unless you know it's your option, then yeah, you gotta decide what characters you're making. Personally, if the players are up for it, I like to let them make their own characters. Then I, as the GM, like to craft my story, or not story, but, you know, uh, my encounters or whatever have you around what they might be good at. Um, but yeah, if you have to make your own, um, I just usually go by what I would think is a fun character. I don't necessarily look for balance in a party. I just make what, make, make what makes sense for the story. Yeah. If I'm crafting characters, I, I totally agree with you. I don't look for balance, but I do look for variety. You know, you, you do, you do like to have, you know, characters that do different things to make it interesting, you know, to create a, a cohesive party dynamic. So if I was crafting the characters, I, I definitely want to vary the abilities that each character has. And for me, it's 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 double edged. I mean, it's, it's two ways that I go about it. If I'm crafting it for crafting characters for uh, like a one shot adventure or something, you know, I try to come up with characters that have interesting concepts, and you know, I write a little background story to kind of get people in the feel of what I was thinking for the characters because they somehow have to be uh injected into that particular scenario the other side of the coin is if i know i'm going to be playing with a group of people much more like al you know i love to have like a session zero beforehand even though it's game you know we call it game time but that first session is really just that it's for us to get together let's flesh out the characters let's uh get a get a feel for the world we're going to be in and um more or less to bring our bring the players and the table together so we have we start that chemistry, start getting that dynamic to what we're going to build as players. So even if I'm running a, uh, you know, a pre-written adventure, you know, I still do that because players will inadvertently or you know, as always, do what you don't expect. But the um oh, I, I was just gonna say with this you know, new game master month in particular, you know, like. Take Our Sorrows is the adventure that most of um, the new GMs are attempting. So, you know, by this time, you should have read Take Our Sorrows. And even if the players crafted their own characters, it gives you an opportunity to look at what you read and see where you could fit their, you know, special talents and abilities and allow them to shine in what particular scenes of the adventure. Exactly. And, um... On top of that, um, if you have them create their own characters for the adventures and you see them beforehand, um, you can really, like, again, what Anthony said, where you can adjust and see, like, where they would shine. Um, and the, the important part there is it kind of lets the players, or like, again, if they're making their own thing, odds are you're going to have to let them tell you how the character fits in the story. And that gives you more stuff to play with as the GM. Um, and again, it gives you more opportunities to let them shine in their special cases because you know a little bit more about them. And hopefully they did write a little bit about, you know, how their characters involved in the story. Right. 
And, you know, and that's exactly what you're saying. And that's, you know, one of the biggest things in the article when it says about choosing the characters, it literally talks about letting each of the characters shine. Everybody gets a moment. Mm -hmm. Um, And, you know, as time has progressed, I've, uh, you know, learned a lot about adopting that type of attitude when, you know, being a game master is, you know, let the story, let the story kind of, introduce the characters and let the characters, you know, find their place in the story. So it, I think it's all a, you know, double, double-edged thing, you know. And, and as the new GM, um, passing the spotlight around can be difficult because as a new GM, you tend to gravitate towards the player or players that seem the most energetic about the adventure and the most gun ho So you tend to keep the spotlight on them. You just have to make a conscious effort to be able to, you know, rotate the main character in each scene and, and try to, if you have to jot down a name, like, hey, you know, Susan, the last scene, you know, Susan was the center of attention. Maybe it's J- John's turn, you know, just so... You, you are rotating that spotlight because it is very important. No, no one wants to play second fiddle for an entire adventure. Um, but that's not to say though, because I have heard of players. Um, I haven't had any in my game, in my games, I should say. But there is a kind of player that I've heard about that enjoy that kind of like backseat. Like they don't really actually want the spotlight. Yeah. And a- after rotating the spotlight well mm. enough, you'll find out quickly that, you know, who, who those players are and adjust the spotlight time accordingly. And again, yeah, there, there, there's nothing wrong with that style. Like if you want to just, you know, you mm. enjoy being a support character, like instead of a main character of a story. I got nothing wrong with that. Just some, that's something to pay uh, pay attention to, or you know, look for the clues about as you see as you give players a spotlight. Do they feel comfortable doing it? Like, are they confident? Like, enjoying the spotlight? And again, um, something to look out for. Yeah, that's a great point, Al. Absolutely agree. <laughs> All right, so we'll move into the next section of the article which I find funny because it's introducing characters. So now you have, everyone has the character sheet. You read the adventure, you read everyone's character. You have a good idea of what they can and cannot do. So you, you, you think you got a good grasp, but then you forgot that you don't know how to start your game. <laughs> I mean, that can be really tough. <laughs> it, it, it can be, but you know, here's, here's the thing, you know, everybody who's played D and D for ever you know more than 10 years ago you know there's always the old trope hey you all meet in a tavern yeah. so that that's perfect um something that monty cook games does a little bit differently or um better is that they give characters connections so if you're using that aspect of your character creation your characters already have been introduced they already have some sort of connection at least you know two characters you know at a time to have some sort of connection. Um, so those things work as well. Um, the other thing is, you know, if you want to play it, if you want to play that these are all strangers coming together for the first time, you know, that's also a place that you can always kind of uh, use to give each character a couple of moments just to have the spotlight, just to have the stage, chef center stage. Um, and it might work out really interesting too, because especially if you got a character that's more social, you know, per se, than Marshall, he's probably going to look really good in that moment, you know. So it, these are all things to think about, but character introduction is important. I mean, Charles put something, the last sentence in this paragraph that I, I wholeheartedly agree with. You know, the game is ultimately about what the characters are going to do once they get rolling, not about how they met. And I think we touched on, on that in the last video we did. You know, no one's going to remember the awkward 20-second scene of how your guys met if the adventure's free-flowing and fun and everyone's having a good time. Even if you met in the tavern, I know it's cliche, but if that's all you could think of, that's okay. It's not going to destroy the game if you don't have this, like, super unique introduction for the player PCs. And uh, just to piggyback off that a little bit, um, because that that whole, what you call it, is pretty cliche, like, oh, you guys are in a tavern, and then, you know, mm-hmm. so-and-so comes up to you saying so on and so forth. 
but you can also just reskin that, which you, which these guys will tell you I do a ton. Yeah. Like for example, my Predation game, um, they're already together getting ready to speak to someone and they're not in a tavern or anything but it's the same thing they're all already together yeah. they're they're going to meet someone that has information for them to get the adventure rolling it's just the same sort of trope they're already all together going to meet someone for information just reskinned in a different way and again it's okay because again what matters the most is the adventure going forward yep yeah that's uh well said Al and I think we pretty much touched on introducing characters is, isn't really much there's not much to the article in the article and there's not really much to touch on overall it's pretty straightforward the next part is allowing adjustments and this could be on multiple fronts it can be adjustments to the actual gameplay adjustments to the players characters that just like your new GM there's a good chance that most of your players are going to be new and they might have seen something on a character sheet that they thought they would enjoy until they actually sat in the table and realized they didn't, you know, care for it too much. And it's an adjustments on the fly to actual fight scenes and stuff. Yeah. I mean, being able to adjust your character, you know, is great for the players, but it's also, you can also use it as a GM. It can be great for you. Um, because I know, think this is more about the GM period. <laughs> it's all yeah, about so the GM making it. That's what I'm saying. It, it yeah. can be great for you as a GM as well because, you know, let's just say somebody did pick something that was like really complex and, you know, everybody thought it was going to be a cool thing, but it just was too much for the table, you know, or too much for that situation. That frees you up as a GM to focus on, you know, something else. You know, it allows you to make adjustments as well. And that's really the, the best part about it. As you as your play your players will tell you exactly what kind of adjustments need to be made. You know. Oh, but even in like say in the case of Numenera, say um, you know, your character somebody wanted to play a nano and then all of a sudden they didn't want you know, they wanted to play a totally different type. It could be cool to describe how the person changed over the course of the first of the adventure and exactly. add it in add it into the story i was just exactly. gonna say that like it as the gm it gives you that or even as the player creatively mm. wants to write <clears throat> what caused their transition from mm. you know what 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 they are whatever just whether we switching from nano to glaive or yeah. just switching one ability for another ability yeah. you know maybe they went out and they trained under some expert glaive and became a glaive in between the first and second session or mm. whatever it may be it does open up that fun creative window to have fun with to decide how that player adjusted within the story and you know i think that uh, i think that's a uh, an awesome representation too as far as uh rpgs are concerned it shows an evolution you know for 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 games in general because there was a point in time you know whatever character class or archetype you pick you're kind of stuck you know mm -hmm. until you got to a new level or something like that where with this you know, it's just like kind of more of a, a reality type trope. I mean, big deal. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, you look at who you are as a person, and then think about who you are. You know, you know, six months ago, for that matter. Especially the new. Especially with a group of first time players, like I'm a firm believer that allow them to m make mistakes and ha change their mind because, you know, there's nothing like. A first time player saying, Hey, this is cool. Oh, I don't like this. Can I do this? And the GM is always no. constantly saying no because then it becomes a deterrent and, and you know, you, you might change someone's whole idea or perspective of the hobby just because, you know, you wasn't willing to allow them to change one thing. And it's, it can be a little scary as a new GM when the players decide to make an adjustment that seems from going from something simple to something complicated. Um, but it's something to use as a hurdle to becoming a better GM. Now it's up to you to figure out, hey, how do I include now this, uh, for example, something simple, they were just, you know, licensed to carry or whatever, they could use a gun. Now they hollow the moon. Now they become a werewolf every 30 days or whatever it is. And now it's something a little more complicated and a little more challenging, but <clears throat> can be very fun to figure that out and will help you grow as a GM. 
you you know it's funny you said that and you said license to carry it and i was like maybe they were a self-loathing werewolf that carried a, a gun with silver bullets in it to commit suicide and then they just you know finally saw the error of their ways and say, hey, this is who I am. I'm going to accept this. I'm going to be a werewolf, you know? And there so we go. All... And, it's, and, and that's something that I just thought of on the fly as you were, you know, speaking. <laughs> and, and, and that's, and I think that's something that, you know, people, you know, new game masters and everything you can develop over time. Mm -hmm. You know, we've been doing this for a long time. So it was real easy for Anthony just to jump right in there and pull a story beat out mm -hmm. of two ideas don't don't get intimidated by it and that's literally the thing kind of you know kind of pull your head off and just be free and you know you guys can think of the story beats in order to make these transitions and changes and adjustments work in your game if you want to you know if you want to do it that way because you know you can also just wholesale ball it up in a piece of paper throw it over there and start from scratch <laughs> it's okay mm -hmm. Exactly. I, I mean, a, a good GM or good GMing is nothing but a series of adjustments. You know, you're adjusting, you're changing the narrative, you, you're changing the way the story is is, is moving, you, you're controlling the direction, and all that is just, you know, simple adjustments. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But um, the article continues with... <clears throat> some more reading basically all the character creation material there's a lot of it so i'm not going to go you know word for word what it says but i will say that there is a character creation walkthrough that's on pages 406 to 407 and that basically summarizes the the you know the process of creating a character um and if you do try to sit down and read all the character options in one sitting you know that will be a lot there is a ton of yeah. options I, I i will say this that you don't you do not i repeat if you're first time, you do not have to familiar yourself with every foci and descriptor, but you should go over the foci and descriptors of the the, the PC players. characters. Yes. Yeah, your you, you should at least read them beforehand. So you don't have to memorize it because it is not your character, but at least have a general idea or understanding of how the foci works. Yeah. And again, the more the better you understand those abilities and whatever characters are at your table again you can adjust those and craft those encounters and story to be more fun for those characters and, uh, and, th and then it goes into my favorite part because I'm a piggy pig but it says bring snacks and drinks to the gaming table and play it in person it's definitely really good uh, <laughs> advice uh <laughs> nobody will ever be upset that you brought some snacks to the table <laughs> trust me yes we like we like our snacks i mean yeah. i've never seen bad. someone get up and go you bought double stuff oreos i'm out of here <laughs> <laughs> um, Listen, the most important thing you know it's, it's it's an old joke it's a trope <laughs> but it's true cheetos mountain dew and funyuns are very important at a gaming table, I mean, yeah. I mean, and, on, and on top of and on top of what Anthony said too, double <laughs> I've I've never been a Mountain Dew guy. I know it's a real big and popular in the game. I've just never been a Mountain Dew guy. It's been too sweet for me. It's all right. Well, again, I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm just saying those are important things. That they, whether it's Mountain Dew, Pepsi, <laughs> you know. I mean, regardless well, of I'm your snack no choice. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy i mean uh the article then continues to say you're ready to go basically at this point you've done all the steps that you needed to take uh and you're ready to run your adventure i mean it tells you all the stuff we've went over in this whole month uh from reading the rules getting the gist of the you know the adventure at hand um and yeah this was a, i don't want to read all that stuff because it's a lot but yeah we did a lot yeah, this month yeah, you know gather the stuff you need and most importantly talk to your players beforehand but then there's more there's steps nine and ten right after it's you know basically talking to your players after the session and finding out you know you know being honest with yourself and honest with the players find out what exactly do they like what they dislike uh, what you did what you could have done better, what they could have done better to make it easier for you. There's, you know? um, there's a, 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 a trope out there that people call it roses and thorns. Mm. And they ask you, you know, to give me 
to give me a couple of roses and then give me a couple of thorns. Roses are the things you found good about the, the experience and the thorns are, you know, the things that you felt could have been better or bad, however you want to, you know, define it. But the, the it's a great thing to do. Um, something that, you know, as, like I said, is an evolution of gaming that's, that has come about. So many more things, you know, it's become such a true uh, collective dynamic. You know, in the old days, you know, you were the GM and you were secretive and you hid behind a screen and you, you know, you, you, the game would be over, you packed your bags and, you know, everybody talked about stuff, but you, you just wait till next time. But, you know, um, a, oh, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. But, um, as a new GM, an important, uh, skill or I guess, um, ability to have at this point in time of your, you know, um, you know, you run your first session and now you're talking to your players about it, is that ability to take, uh, constructive criticism well um you're a new gm everyone even myself even these two guys they've been gming for years and years they're always learning um there's always things they can improve upon and that's a player to player thing it's not like um you know there's a universal guide to being a good gm there's aspects of the games they could improve to make that player's experience better and that's something that they'll probably chime in about like hey it would have been more fun if you did X, Y, and Z. And that's not a personal attack on how you ran the game. It's just something that they may have found more fun. And even if it is something about how you ran the game, maybe it ran too long. Maybe you made a mistake here and there with the rules. Um, this this point in time, if someone points it out to you, it's not, it's not a personal attack on you. It's just, an again, this, this is a discussion to get better at your craft. Or, or to have an enjoyable experience for everyone. You, yes, you know, that too. And... I will say this about mistakes. They're going to happen. Everyone makes them regardless of your level of experience. So if you did make a blatant mistake, don't hop on it. You know, just try to analyze where you went wrong and see if you could correct it. And if you can't correct it, try to avoid scenarios that puts you in that same position. Yeah, that's, that's a great piece of advice. I mean, and, you know, it, it's even funny that, um, you know, the new Game Mastermind, one of the last bullet points was about, you know, checking back next week, you know, because we're going to do a follow-up post. So, you know, we're doing a follow-up video for you right now, talking about all of this. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you're out there and you're you're still kind of floundering, figuring out when you want to run that adventure, get in touch with us. You know, mm -hmm. Cypher Unlimited is more than willing to host, uh, host you as a new GM and, you know, help you and walk you through it, you know. And, you know, we're guys that even are getting your game and just hang out with you as a support system. So, and uh, especially if you found yourself going through new GM month and being excited about it, but we're unable to just get a group together or maybe the flat plans fell through or whatever have you, and you're still itching to run that adventure, they'll feel free to come on to the Cypher Unlimited Discord uh, where we do have a new GM channel dedicated for this stuff. Um, and there have been, I'm sure there's more than enough people to fill games should you find yourself in the need of that. Absolutely. And if you have run the adventure, please um, please feel free to tell us about it. We want to know. How did it go? Was it fun? Did you, did you TPK the party? Did they all survive? We want to hear all these wonderful stories. You can either post it on the comment section down below or come to the Cypher Unlimited Discord and post it there. But we definitely want to hear about it. Or come to our uh, Facebook page as well. You know, post it there. Um, we did. We have had a few posts already of people who run their first games, and so far the feedback has been pretty positive, pretty awesome. So, looking forward to hearing more stories and you know having more games run. Yeah, I mean, and hopefully these people who have run games will continue to do so. They enjoyed it. I mean, it seems like the people who have posted their stories enjoyed the experience, and hopefully at least the more sessions on the server, um, you know, from these new GMs, because you know it's just awesome to see new people getting into the into the hobby. It's just it's fantastic. <laughs> um, yeah. You you could also go to the new Game Master Month Facebook group as well and post your adventures there. And I'm sure that these four wonderful companies would gladly, I mean, would be happy to hear about your escapades. Absolutely. And we'll be sure to post links to all that stuff down below in the description. Um, but yeah, I think that kind of wraps up new GM month. Absolutely. 
Um, just like in all our other videos, I, I want to give a special uh, shout out to all the participating companies. You know, Chaosium, Pelgrain Press, Atlas Games, and Monica Games. Your guys are awesome, and your pillar of light in the entire community for doing this. You know, you you spreading the hobby. You know to new GMs and that's always a great thing and you know keep on doing what your guys are doing and if your viewers please support these companies because without companies like this the hobby wouldn't survive you know and just a real quick recap for those of you who might be joining us right away you know just recently you know of course you can go back and check out you know the previous catalog on this the videos on this but um, each of the games that are featured are pretty awesome you know you've got uh, Trail of Cthulhu, that's kind of like a gumshoe, you know, uh, romp into the world of madness, Seven Sea, Pirates. How can you go wrong with Pirates and Magic? I mean, there's there's nothing wrong with that. Um, Unknown Armies is, you know, a bit of a, what is it, otherworldly type deal where there's yeah. things coming through and you have to fight against it. And of course, Numenera said one billion years in the future, you know, where magic and science, you know, have blurred the lines between the two. So it's just amazing, you know, and you got a plethora of other games out there. So, yes, let's do this. I mean, I, I'm sure you know where our um, preferences lie. Um, <laughs> definitely do recommend the Cypher Core for any new GMs or, you know, if you, if you, if you enjoyed Numenera as part of the new GM month, you would definitely enjoy the Cypher Core. Um, and not to say anything wrong with Numenera if you enjoyed it, but Cyber System is our jam. Um, yeah. <laughs> if you want us to run Taker or Sorrows on the stream, let us know as well, because we're glad. I'm sure one of us will run Taker or Sorrows and stream it. No, no, if no, you want to no compare how, how an experienced GM, you know, ran this adventure, if you want something, you know, to compare it to, we'll absolutely do that for you as well. Yeah, just let us know down below in the comments. Um, and uh, yeah, I think that about wraps it up here, fellas. Any final, final thoughts? Um, um, I'll let Al say what we're doing next week. I just want to go back to say that we're going to go back to our regular schedule programming that we normally do. You know, we're going to do a lot more. We're going to, you know, it's been a long time coming. We, we actually haven't reviewed Stars of Fire or Stay Alive. You know, we haven't done our reviews of either one of those two books, so we're going to definitely do those within this month. We got a couple of really good interviews lined up, and we have a really great one lined up next week that we stream streaming live on Twitch, and I'll let Dean talk about that, but I love you guys. Uh, yeah, so next week, the 12th of February, we're going to have none other than Sean K. Reynolds on the show. We're going to, you know, talk in depth about Stay Alive and all the things about it, you know, this book is great. Um, Damn you, you, you know, got your copy. <laughs> we're going to talk about Stars of Fire in a, probably the following week. But we're going to get back to our editorials and our reviews of products and things, you know, just our regularly scheduled programming. We're going to have some actual plays coming, you know. Um, there's some things still on the pipeline for Cypher Unlimited that we're pretty excited about. And hopefully, you know, you'll, you all join us out there. Yep, yep. Uh, very exciting stuff to look forward to, especially next week. Be definitely on the lookout for that. Uh, we'll have a post, or excuse me, a link down below in the description of our Twitch. Uh, it will be live there and then also uploaded to YouTube afterwards for those who can't make it live. Um, so, yeah, if you want to catch it on YouTube later, be sure to, uh, you know, subscribe to our channel. Uh, and on top of that, be sure to uh, like the videos and uh, share them out to everyone else, everyone you know. Um, the, yeah, Anthony, if you feel like you want to check. I was going to say, if you don't know who Sean K. Reynolds is, check our catalog. We interviewed him once. The guy's a master at his craft. He's been with Monica Games for so many years, and he's he's been involved not only Monica Games, but so many other tabletop games. So you can watch our first interview with him and then watch our Stay Alive with, um, interview with him next week. Yeah, he's um he's been in the industry for close to thirty years, if not thirty plus. Um, he's worked on a little bit of everything. But hey, once again, we're gonna talk about all of that, you know, real quick in the intro next week <coughs> before we get into the fun and festivities of Stay Alive. Um, the latest setting from Monty Cook Games setting toolkit book is pretty awesome. Very exciting. Yes, I cannot wait to get my physical copy. 
Um, but yeah, you know, again, be sure, uh, you know, thank you so much for watching. You know, you guys are amazing. Be sure to like, share, subscribe, you know, as usual. You guys are awesome. Thanks for keeping us awesome. Um, and uh, yeah, you know, from us at CU, we will see you later.